beautiful day out here at my place and I took a break from uber lifting to come home and um, have some lunch and share with you guys what I've been going through um, and hopefully it will help you guys because in the Holy Spirit's been ministering to my heart through the word and I felt very strongly that there are several other people out there who are also being um, discouraged a little bit and are maybe starting to feel a little weary in your well-doing when it comes to sharing the message of Jesus, uh, whether it's in church or online or um, through a YouTube ministry or just, you know, websites and Facebooks. No matter what road your ministry is on, this is for you and for me to not be discouraged. Second Peter 3, verses 1 through 18. This is my second letter to you, dear friends, and in both of them, I've tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. I want you to remember what the Holy Prophet said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promises that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has always remained the same since the world was created. They deliberately forget that God made the heavens a long time ago by the word of his command, and he brought the earth from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. By the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as most people think. No, he's really being patient with us for our sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief in the night. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live, looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along on that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in flames. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth that he's promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to sometimes understand, and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different than what they were meant to, just as they do with other parts of scripture, and this will result in their destruction. In Peter's final words in the last few verses, you already know these things, dear friends, so be on guard then you will not be carried away by the error of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing and own position. Rather, you must grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All glory to him, both now and forever. Amen. So another scripture that really seemed to hit home with me, being discouraged a little and, and feeling like, Oh my gosh, am I even on the right path and and uh, trying to find the balance between ministry and regular life with bills and all that kind of thing um, and the needs of my kids and stuff like that. So this was from Luke 21 and it, this is verse 10 is kind of a precursor. You kind of almost have to know this or rehear this verse first to know what it's talking about. Um, but the meaning of this message that was to me wasn't really about the end time stuff it was more about encouraging those of us who are being woken up and given these messages for the masses 
um, because of the end times. So, okay, let me move on. Luke 21, verse 10. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilence in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. So I'm not going to get into all that. That's part of my paintings. I know I've been shown that for sure, but this message is something different. This is about how we are to respond and how we are to encourage each other and ourselves. It says, but before, and this is all Jesus speaking right here, okay, y'all? But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison. And you will be brought before kings and governors and all on account of my name. I know that you're thinking, why does that sound encouraging? Well, because even though that all happens to us, when all this stuff goes down, and we know it. So before all these things happen, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me. I know that doesn't sound very encouraging right now, but this is why it's encouraging. Because it says, but make up your mind. Make up your mind. Make a decision. Stick by it. This is to myself, y'all, and to everyone, anyone who needs this, okay? It says, make up your mind beforehand not to worry. Don't worry about how you're going to defend yourself. Don't worry about what you're going to say. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by your parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends. And they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me. But not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. Okay? So what I'm saying is, even though we go through some stuff, right now we're being attacked on these little things, little subtle things. But there's going to come a time, you know, as we get closer, that we're going to be persecuted. A lot more than what we're persecuted now. And we need to remember the good things that were promised. We, if we're going to stand on the word, we have to stand on the word. We have to stand on it and be like, you know what? I know these things are going to come. So if we can, if we know these big things are coming, how, why can't we deal with these little things? We have to deal with these little things. These are preparing us. This spiritual warfare that is like so hardcore right now. It's preparing us for the big spiritual warfare that is to come. That's very, very close at hand. And so we really got to get this prayer warrior business on lock before we're going to be able to really fight the good fight, you know? But be encouraged because he said he's going to be right there. with the, He's going to get in the lion's den with us. He's going to be right there. We don't have to worry about fighting our enemies. We just have to know how to pray. And we got to get in our word every day and make sure that we are putting on the full armor of God and getting in his will. When we're in his will, that puts us in position to receive the blessings he has and it puts us in position to be covered with his um, anointing. It has everything that's pouring out on us. But when we're not lined up in the will of God, well, what does that mean, being lined up in the will of God? It means look at the word and follow what he, the Holy Spirit moves you. The word is alive. It cuts off the bad stuff as we read it. It, it'll bring to light certain things that you may have been doing wrong and it will help you it will it will help purify these things and I don't know how it does it but it does it that's all I know because I've been putting it to the test a lot lately and it works it works y'all uh, my prayer is just that everyone out there y'all I want to encourage you guys okay parable of the vineyards I've heard some of y'all stuff not a lot I haven't watched all your videos I'm so sorry I mean I'm just brand new to this whole thing but you guys have had some really great encouraging words for me. Um, there's another one. Um, let me just look. Okay, I'm going to look. And I, okay, Watchmen on the Wall, 88. Great teacher. And um, he put up a, I'll link it below, um, the Raging Spiritual Warfare and the Whispers of the Enemy. Um, he posted that on today, actually. And it was exactly what I was being shown like he says it so much more eloquently than I do 
but it was exactly what I was being shown. Well, working on this message to my tribe, the song by Matthew West, Broken Things, came to mind, and the lyrics in that, where it talks about the pages of history, they tell me it's true, that it's never the perfect, it's always the ones with the scars that you use. It's the rebels and the, prodig the prodigals. It's the humble and the weak. All the misfit heroes you choose. Tell me there's hope for sinners like me. Realizing though that he's taken all of us misfits and that's what I feel like, man. Like I feel like we've got this whole group of misfits that we're all in this together, you know, regardless of religious labels, we're in it together because we are the bride of Christ and he's returning to come get us and it's almost time. And so keep fighting the good fight, be bold, speak in the spirit, not from pride or flesh and pray for each other.